Welcome to Speakernomics, the official podcast of the National Speakers Association. I'm Kenneth Kinney, but friends call me Shark. And like you, I'm a professional speaker and I love listening to Speakernomics. Speakernomics is a professional speaker show that will help you thrive and grow speaking business so you too can change the world. One keynote session, workshop, and speech at a time. And on this episode, we're doing something a little different again different about being different. In fact, we're taking on a great topic and looking through the lens of quite a few really smart people who view the speaking game differently, and then we'll draw some answers and insights through their stories. Now to all my speaking friends, what is it that makes a speaker truly different, memorable on and or off the stage? There are a lot of speakers out there and meeting planners have a lot of choices. You want to stand out as the obvious go-to choice, don't you? Then are you willing to take action and ownership of what your different is? Most of us have something that makes us different, and many of you even convey that unique selling proposition well. But does that same view of differentiation resonate with the people who hire us, the audiences who listen to us, or is it just an exercise in what we think is just a differentiation between you and just the other speakers with that same topic in the same category? Let's dive in then with a sweet 16 of perspectives from speakers, coaches, agents, meeting planners, and bureaus, and tackle this, oh well, different way. Hopefully some of the insights will help you take a new look on what it takes for you to be different. And let me remind you too, that if you're not following their voices on the audio version, then make sure to check out NSA's YouTube channel to watch the video version of the show there. The experts that we're showcasing today in order of appearance include Cavett Award recipient, Hall of Fame speaker, and CSP Scott McCain, CSP and Hall of Fame speaker, and Emmy Award winner, Mark Scherenbrock. Speaker, voiceover artist, actor, and coach, John Watkins, CSP, and former host of Speakernomics, Tom Singer. Keynote speaker, MC, and CSP, Jess Pettit. The Spice Master, CSP, Frank Kitchen. CSP and Global Speaking Fellow, Sylvie DeGiusto. Bureau expert, Tim Matthey from Speakers Bureau, Speak Inc. Speaker agent, Phenom Michelle Joyce of the speaker management company, Michelle Joyce Speakers. The energetic CSP, Karen McCullough. Emmy Award-winning keynote speaker and certified speaking professional, Clyde Pulver. The engaging and magnetic speaker, Denise Hamilton. The awesome certified meeting professional and senior manager of meetings and events for Destination South, Shannon Jones. Booking agent extraordinaire, Nona Prather. Speaker, trainer, and keynote director, Mike Ganino. And we couldn't close this one out if we didn't have differentiation expert and the man with a big sexy idea, Mark Levy. And before we jump in, make sure to go to speakernomics.com. That's where you can find the tips, insights, and knowledge to help you become a better speaker, build a better business, and get paid to speak. Now, let's learn from some special people, and then I'll see you on the other side with some key takeaways. Scott, what makes a speaker different on or off the stage? Well, first of all, Shrek, I, I think it's important to say that we shouldn't be different off the stage than we are on the stage. Now, naturally, we're more dramatic in how we make the presentation, but there has to be authenticity on the stage and on the platform. And the only way you do that is if you're the same person on stage that you are off stage. I'm, I'm a little better, better version of myself on stage because I'm a little more prepared and practiced, but, but I think there has to be congruency there. And, and the word I like to use, as you know very well, is distinction. Different means there's something merely different about what I do, right? I, I, I do something crazy on stage or I, you know, whatever, but it doesn't mean it has meaning for the audience. I think distinction is when what we do that is unique has meaning for the audience. And so what I always try to do is to find ways that, that, that we can bring more value to the, to the members of the audience. And when you do that, you're bringing more value to the organization and to the meeting planner. So take a look at what you're doing and ask yourself, what could I do to take this up a level or two? The second thing I always suggest is if, if Steve jobs came back today and was a professional speaker, how would he run his business? business different than you're running yours? Or what if, you know, what if Jeff Bezos or or somebody like that decided to be in the speaking business? What would they do? Now, first of all, they have a lot more financial resources, but how would they think uniquely? Because when you think about it, all Jeff Bezos did is say, how do we become the enterprise rental car of books? And then everything else, right? Enterprise said, we'll pick you up. Jeff Bezos said, what a great idea. What, What if we did that with books where you didn't have to go to Barnes and Noble to get them? So it's it's that kind of thinking 
that will create uniqueness for you, distinction for you, if you will, in the marketplace. Well, and they would probably sell some sort of coaching program, sadly, but that's another story. Uh, but you and I also talked about when we were walking around the halls at Influence about the stories, the unique stories that differentiate speakers in the marketplace. Yeah, and and that becomes part of your trademark, so to speak, uh, as well. You know, uh, my wife and I went to see Elton John before he closed his residency in Las Vegas. And you know, he better sing Crocodile Rock. He better sing his hits, right? I mean, we didn't pay that money to have him show up and uh, do new material or do, uh, you know, do somebody else's songs or or whatever. They, they want you to play the hits. Well, what happens in a speaker's career is there are certain stories that become your hit songs, so to speak. You know, we wanted to hear Jeannie Robertson, uh, rest in peace. We wanted to hear the late, great Jeannie Robertson tell the Tell the baton story. Uh, there, there are signature stories that speakers tell that we want to hear again, just as an audience wants to hear a hit record again at a concert. And so, you know, I might be a little bit tired of, of telling the Taxi Terry story, but I know that, first of all, I know the audience wants to hear it. And secondly, you know, the crazy thing about this business is if that audience hasn't heard it, it's new to them. You might have told the story, you know, 500 times, but for that particular audience, it's brand new and it becomes part of it. You know, I've, I've got to tell you, I had this meeting uh, the other day and I, it's a group that I'd spoken to before, like four years before, and they brought me back and I thought, well, they, you know, they've, they've heard the taxi Terry story, which is one of my signature stories. And I thought, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to tell it. I told it when I was here four years ago, I had more people come up and say, Oh man, I am, you know, loved your speech, but I'm just so disappointed because I wanted to hear that cab driver story again. Or there was somebody that had, wasn't at the convention four years ago and they were, they were nudging him saying, man, just you wait, he's got this great story about this cab driver. You're going to love it. And then when I didn't tell it, it made them look bad, right? To their, to their friends. So I, I think sometimes we need to, to realize that what makes us distinctive is also something that is repeatable and referable. By repeating those signature stories, it makes us easier for the people in the audience to want to hear it again, but also to refer us to, to other people. And I think that is one of the, and, and those signature stories are yours. It's based on your experience and your observations. It's not telling a story that other people tell that you act like it happened to you when it didn't, or that, you know, you, you, you tell, you're, you're constantly co quoting somebody else's story because if it's out there, then that means that, that everybody can tell it. I was in a program years ago and four speakers told the same story and three of the four told it as if it had happened to them. And by the time it was being told the fourth time, the audience started laughing and the speaker on stage had no idea why, why they just lost the crowd. Well, you, you got to take your story and tell your story because that's what makes you a professional. Mark, what makes a speaker truly memorable and considered different? I'm going to take the advice and the, the standpoint that my friend, Eric Chester, fellow hall of fame speaker, an amazing person said, our job is to make people the first person I've ever heard it from was him. Uh, think, feel, know, do. What are you going to do in your time with an audience to get them to think differently, uh, to to feel something, um, to uh, think, feel, know, do. Know something different, uh, do. Take action. Here's the key. Here, here's all the, the keys of piano. If you're only playing Apple versus playing every key, there's a difference. You know, people, the line that I hear more than anything else that I'm hoping for is that was an emotional roller coaster. You had me laughing and crying within 60 seconds. So to, to, to play the full range, to be able to get people to take action, to remember you, to do something or think differently uh, than they did before they sat on that chair. All right. So John, what is it that you see that makes a speaker truly memorable on or off the stage? What I see that makes a speaker memorable on or off the stage is the unique angle from which they approach their topic. 
For example, my friend Julie Henry has a book called Leadership Lessons from the Wild. Her background is in aquatics. And so because of that, she has applied different sea creatures to leadership styles and leadership strengths. When the publishers of her book saw her pitch, they immediately said, this is different. When I talk about presentation skills, my book is called Speaking Notes. I talk about how to prepare a speech from the same standpoint as a artist would a song. Those are different principles. And because I come up from it from an angle that is different, people will remember the concept. So the question is, you're speaking about leadership. You're speaking about communication skills. How is your approach different? And how does it tap into your own experiences? Because people will remember you if you are unique as opposed to just delivering it the way everyone else does. Tom, what makes a speaker, what's that differentiating factor that makes a speaker truly memorable on or off the stage? I think what really differentiates a speaker is the ability to tell a great story. When this, we remember speakers years later, it's often those signature stories that they tell, those unique stories to them, not the starfish story, but a story about something that, that they witnessed, that they researched, that they did, or that somebody in their life actually did. Those are the pieces that we remember. And so I think, you know, really being able to craft a story is the key. Jess, to you, what makes a speaker memorable or different, differentiated in the marketplace on or off the stage? You know, it's funny is being such a bright, colorful person inside of NSA, I tend to be pretty visible and I get asked this question a lot and a lot of speakers will often say to me, you're just so real and you're just so authentic. And I think speakers, professional speakers would say I differentiate because I'm colorful. I wear patterned clothing. I'm a large person. I got tattoos, whatever. But speakers aren't my buyers. And so if speakers are listening to this, if you're talking about differentiating yourself in a crowded market, it doesn't matter what your colleagues say. Bureaus might say that I differentiate because I am ridiculously easy to work with. And I also consistently over deliver, or at least that's the feedback they get from their clients. Um, I think that is an amazing differentiator. Try, go ahead, try to be easier to work with than me. Not going to happen. And I have my own clients, right? So the bureaus have their clients. I have my own clients. My clients would say that the fact that I bring humor to DEI topics is a big differentiator because I'm able to laugh about topics that we're scared to even talk about. Then I also use this Q&A piece where I look like I'm improving Q our questions in the moment based usually on current events in the last 24 hours, whether it's virtual or in person. So it's a great question, but I would encourage those of you listening to differentiate yourself from your competition is one thing, but to listen to what your clients say, that is another. And whatever it is they say, lean into that. If it's true to who you are, that is how to differentiate yourself. All right, Frank, we're going to keep it fresh with a name like Kitchen, but what makes <laughs> a speaker truly memorable? What makes them memorable? It sounds crazy. You know, we expect speakers to be great on stage. And when I used to book speakers, I shared with my students who are booking the speakers. I go, is a speaker greater off stage than they are on stage? We expect the speaker to be great on stage, but how are they off stage? I mean, are they there to take pictures, talk with you, have the deep conversation? We had a speaker one time, they would come into the different public speaking classes and classes and speak on their expertise and content. And that made them memorable. We would spread the word and they would get brought back in. So I want to know, is that person great off stage because they have this persona in their videos and their website, but then they get there. And if they're not, you know, let's say open or willing to talk to people, or they just come in, speak, collect their check and go, that leaves a bad taste, you know, last name's kitchen in my mouth. But the ones who spend a little bit of extra time, connect with people, offer to, you know, help out by judging, uh, make themselves as approachable, um, as visible as possible. That's what makes a speaker memorable. Sylvie, what makes a speaker truly memorable, whether it's on or off the stage? Speaking is never about the speaker. Speaking is always about the audience and the impact you have on them and the client you serve for. 
So I always say, besides the fact that you have to have incredibly valuable content, perform on stage like the pro that you are, also be easy to work with. No matter if it's your client, no matter if it's a meeting professional, no matter if it's a speaker bureau, they don't just interact with you. They have thousands of items on their list to make an event successful. You must be the item that is at the bottom of their list to worry about. Tim, what makes a speaker truly memorable on or off the stage? Sure. Uh, great question. Um, I, I just think, and I wish I had, you know, three points to make, you know, defining data there, but I don't. Uh, I just think being authentic, be authentically you is is the key there. And I and I think, Shark, you have the great point of on and off the stage. I mean, I'll go off the stage, right? You have an AV check that morning. Don't just be on time, be early. Maybe bring a donut, maybe bring some coffee, maybe bring, you know, a gift card for the AV team. I think a way to make yourself stand out somehow is so huge for when they come back a month later, be it the meeting planner or the AV team, they're coming back going, wow, that speaker was, you know, and hopefully it's some positive, not a negative statement. And I think just being authentically you, but making that little extra effort makes things memorable for you, even before you even hit the stage. Michelle, what makes a speaker truly memorable and differentiated in this market? Truly memorable, I think, would be the stories they tell on stage that are sticky, right? Everyone has a body of work. They have content. But it's the stories they tell that relate that content to the hearts and the minds of the audience that I think has that lasting impression. We hear that a lot with our speakers. They can still reminisce and quote the story they told that really punched a point because stories are stories are easier for people to remember than facts and figures. So I think that makes people memorable. And I also, you know, I'm going to go back to what I said earlier with being easy to work with that. I know that sounds so simple, but there are people out there who are not easy to work with. And those people will not get repeat business. The people that that show up for the client and the bureau rep and the meeting planner, and they're just amazing to work with. They they are a true partner in the event. They're kind, they're on time. They eliminate risk and fear for the meeting planner. Those are the memorable ones. Hey friends, Dan Irvin here, professional speaker and resident speaker here at The Speaker Lab. I'm reaching out to you because I booked over 60 paid gigs in 2023. Do you want to book 60 paid gigs or do you want to book double that? If you are looking to get booked and paid and you want to book more paid gigs, go to thespeakerlab.com slash NSA and book a call with our team today. Can't wait to connect with you. Before we jump back to the show, here's a moment from the halls at NSA's National Conference Influence with NSA member, speaker and trainer Molly Ketchum. Let's hear what being part of the National Speakers Association means to Molly. Molly, tell us what does NSA mean to you and what you're doing in your business? You know, building a speaking business, a professional speaking business, can be a lonely endeavor. We are solopreneurs in, the, in most cases. So NSA, for me, is an opportunity to collaborate, to get feedback from my peers, and content is quality learning and development. And that's what we need to build great businesses. Karen, what makes a speaker truly memorable? When I saw that question, I had to really think back on this one. Um, for me, and I have to tell us a short story here. Um, so I started speaking a long time ago. And, you know, in 1999, I started. And about three, four years in, I, I knew I needed a brand. I'd come from this whole branding business in my other, my retail business, but I didn't know what my brand was. So I hired a branding expert and she said to me, we did an exercise and she said, list your top 10 clients. In the beginning, she said, your top 10 competitors. In the beginning, I was so dumb. I said, do I have any competitors? <laughs> I was a beginner speaker. So I found my top competitors. And then she said, now, what do you do really well? Make a list. And I made a list on humor, whatever. And then she went through the list of my competitors. And she said, okay, number one, does this person, are they funny? Do they have humor? Do they? And lo and behold, everybody on the list did everything I did. 
And she said, we've got to find out what your differentiator is. And so we wrote a letter. This took a lot of guts to a lot of my clients that I'd had those first three to four years. And we asked them, I told them, I was working with a branding a consultant. What do you remember the most about my program? And I listed, do you remember my content? Do you remember my humor? No one checked off anything I listed. Time and time again, it came back, your energy. I was bummed. I thought, my energy, that's a dumb thing to remember me by. But that's what they remembered. And my, my branding expert said, man, we've got to go with it. And we started, we called my uh, my newsletter a shot of energy back then. Energy is my differentiator. It's my promise. In a brand, it's your promise. I promise every time I get on that stage that I am going to not only give you my energy, but I'm going to raise the energy in the audience. And I believe that we have to know that. We have to explore it. Words are words. We are speakers. We put those words to life. We've got to use our body, our face. We've got to use our energy. And we've got to connect with the audience using what we have here that is our differentiator. So for me, find your differentiator and go with it. And don't be afraid to use it, even if it's something you're not crazy about, like your energy. Because in the end, it pays off. All right, Clint, what makes a speaker truly memorable to make a difference? I think it's it's about creating moments of impact from the stage. Uh, I look at the speakers that have affected me the most in my life, and they were the ones that truly created incredible moments on the stage, from their performance to their storytelling uh, to just the, the the overall message. Um, I think it's it's key when you know you get off stage and what do you think, and everybody you know comments and they come up. What do you learn? And if there's that those consistent themes. Um, that's where you know you're really making that impact. And it's through those specific moments that you create on stage that people never forget. And I believe that is what changes people and influences behavior. And did they get a pair of your drumsticks? Absolutely. They got a pair of my drumsticks. <laughs> Denise, it's hard for a lot of speakers, but in your eyes, what makes a speaker truly memorable on and off the stage? Uh I really love a speaker that I feel like they care about me. I feel like I've heard some speakers that are really smart and they feel like they seem like they have a lot of wisdom, but I don't feel like they care about the audience. Like they're not really there to make sure their lives are better. They're really focused on showing how smart they are. Um, but the, the speakers that have been the most memorable to me are the ones that I felt their heart come through. They smiled, they engaged. Um, they were able to touch on deeper emotions in their presentation. Um, not to say like they trauma dump or they cry in a speech. I'm not saying that you manipulate people, but I do feel like that person who you feel their heart, like they really want good things for you. That's always memorable for me. And a dash of that comes with humility, which you showed when I saw you present at 2023 Thrive in San Antonio. There were 50 speakers that declared themselves experts. And when you did yours, you set up your whole presentation and said, I'm not an expert, mm -hmm. but it became about the audience and not about yourself. So we're on a journey together and that's that's every speech i wish it was like that because people want to feel seen they want to feel understood they want to feel like you took the time to figure out what they need and you gave it to them and so i think those are just the best speeches shannon to you what makes a speaker truly memorable whether it's on or off the stage I think um, a more memorable speaker is somebody that you have takeaways from and and really somebody that your audience can relate to. You know, if if they come on stage and they're speaking far above the knowledge base of your audience and after 10 minutes, the audience is, I don't know what this person's talking about. I don't align with it at all. They typically will shut off. Um, I think the speakers that I remember the most are the ones that I have walked away with a life lesson, a quote, a tangible um, item that I can use in my work life, in my personal life, something I can repeat, a story that may mean something to me. So I think what's really impactful is when you can come away with something and, and that means something different to every topic and, and every room, really. Um, 
but that would probably be what creates something most memorable for me. You can tell when people get on stage and they are not talking about something that they are passionate about or is important to them because they're just regurgitating words. Um, it's very different atmosphere and experience when somebody gets on stage and they are passionate and extremely knowledgeable about what they are talking about. So I think that's what creates something most memorable for me. Nona, as a booking agent, whether it's on or off the stage, what do you see that truly makes a speaker memorable? Definitely not being cookie cutter. There's a ton of leadership, motivational speakers out there. But if you have a specific niche that you um, hone into or that you're known for, that does that does a lot better. I have a client who is an artist and he so he goes in and he does his leadership uh, talk, but he also paints at the same time. And he's a really, really accomplished artist. And then he donates that to the organization so that they can use it as a fundraiser or they can hang it in their office. I have another client who does a little um, a little guitar piece while he's in his in his speech that he does really well. I have another one that has a uh, she's a singer. So she incorporates that. So as long as you're not, you know, the cookie cutter motivational speaker, like really think of a way to stand out. And that's the best way to get noticed. And it could be, I mean, outside of the box. I mean, some people will say a part of whenever I um, am onboarding a new client, I send them a speaker profile with questions. And one of my questions is, how do you stand out from a crowd? And a lot of times they'll say, well, I have a I have a doctor de doctorate degree in marketing and I'm like, okay, that's not okay. I mean, that's great. That's perfect. That's awesome. But that's honestly not going to make you stand out as much. What I mean is how are you going to entertain the crowd as well as educate them? Cause a lot of, I mean, speakers are there not only to educate, but also entertain and do both. So if you're able to do both, that's really, I mean, you're a shoe in, that's the best thing you can do. Mike, what is it that you see that makes a speaker truly stand out, be differentiated and truly memorable in the marketplace? I think to be memorable, we have to really look at what they're doing on stage. How are they bringing those ideas to life? Not just did they have a good story that they told or did they have, you know, did they research and get the trends right and the details right, but how do they bring it all together? And I just you're never going to find me answering questions like this when I don't talk about our presence and our delivery. Because if you got a great story, but you rush it, or you don't know when to take a pause and give a look at the audience so they can laugh, so they can think, so they can say, oh my gosh, that is exactly what we're dealing with. He nailed it. If you don't know how to deliver the story, the data, the research, if you don't know how to do that, it doesn't matter. So I think what make someone memorable are two things clarity clarity in your idea clarity in your story clarity in your movement on stage audiences largely listen with their eyes they listen with their eyes they are watching how are you moving what are you doing how did you signal this what was the gesture what was the facial expression that is how you become a memorable you become someone who is so aligned with the words you're saying that the audience can't take their eyes off you it's almost like like you're kind of, uh, you're, they, they got to watch you because you're a live wire. They don't know what you're going to do next. And that's not from being zany and wild. It's from being so present and alive that it feels like electric, it feels like electricity. That is how you become memorable. You said clarity. What was the other one? Oh, clear. <laughs> that's a teaser. That's called an open loop. I leave them all over the place. They're free for everybody. Open loops for me. That's called ADHD thinking. Yes. So clarity is one. And the second one is contrast and contrast in the way you tell the story, contrast in your movement. You know, if you walk out and you stand there for a moment and you just kind of talk to them and you're sharing and then all of a sudden something happens and it makes you pop up and you walk over to this guy and you talk to him. That's contrast, contrast in your delivery. When do you get softer? When do you tell them this is a really important thing because I've just lowered my voice and so you know something important is coming? When do you speed up because something is ridiculous and wild and you want to point to it? Contrast and clarity are the two things that will make you memorable on stage. Mark, so what is it that makes a speaker truly different and memorable in this marketplace? Yeah, well, to become really memorable in the marketplace uh, you have to, this may sound obvious, but it is not obvious. 
you have to say something that is so true and that it will stop people in their tracks. Like you can't go just for a good sound bite or or following a specific status quo kind of formula. Like you have to go for the jugular. You have to look at your IP and what your audience wants to achieve in life and how your audience wants to be different in life. Like what is it about, about life at work or life, you know, at home or so that's so important to them that they're not just not getting. And then you need to tell them about it in the most honest way that you possibly can so much so that it'll be startling because no one has ever told them about it as clearly and honestly and unusually as you have normally when i'm talking to clients uh or prospects and i'm telling them about what we're going to need to do in order to differentiate and I, i'm going to curse um is is we want this to be so good that strangers will want to have a conversation with you right away. And to make something that good, it has to have almost like a visceral reaction in people. When they hear it, they have to go, no effing way. So that to me is differentiation. It, it, it's almost like we're a TV studio or a movie studio and we're going to be pumping tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars into something. So it's got to fly. Like it can't work just for your friends. I, I often hear people come up with differentiation or so and it sounds okay because it sounds like what everyone else has, but that's not going to work out in the world. So you, your differentiation needs to work on strangers out in the world. <laughs> so that's what we're going for. Great insights. And now let's do a quick recap based on their expert advice and find what might be different for you. I'll break this down the same way the speakers were arranged in order. First, stories. At a high level, when you consider the way the stories speakers tell, Scott, Mark, John, and Tom all remind us about the importance of stories, your stories, not the shared ones, and how impactful authenticity and your unique point of view is needed to lean into differentiating yourself from the competition. Think of it about like a trademark. Scott, in air quotes, owns the Taxi Terry story. The same with Mark and Nice Bike. Are the stories you tell authentically yours and yours alone? Second, Jess, Frank, Sylvie, Tim, and Michelle eloquently point out how important it is to be easy to work with on and off the stage. We're way past only green M&Ms, but there are still too many stories of speakers who are divas. In normal life, what brand do you buy from? By choice, that's hard to work with because you enjoy the hassle. Likely none. Meeting planners, bureaus, conferences, they have a lot of choices and being easy to work with is not just a subheading for your speaker brand logo. Make it a part of your professional DNA. And third, we close out with Karen, Clint, Denise, Shannon, Nona, Mike, and Mark as they remind us about memorable moments with energy and passion, real takeaways, clarity and contrast, creating an amazing experience. And Mark highlights that visceral experience that grabs our emotions. You're walking down a conference hallway and the doors are open. Did you stop to hear more from the speaker because what they said rang so true that it stopped people in their tracks? I hope so. And one more consideration for me that we touched on a little during the show, there are always things we can do to make ourselves look different as speakers on paper or online, but also never forget that being different is truly about making a difference for others, the audiences we serve. Just a reminder that we're there to help them and not the other way around. Now it's time to go and be memorable and different. Friends, make sure to join us at speakernomics.com and let your voice be heard. I am Kenneth Shark Kenny, your host of the National Speakers Association's podcast, Speakernomics. And this has been another fantastic and different episode of the show. Thank you for the privilege of your time. And remember, Speakernomics is a podcast where you'll learn to speak, get paid, repeat.